Good morning. It, it, the sun is shining in England, in Birmingham. It feels like LA out here. We were saying that. So it's a good day to be at Gymshark HQ talking with this lovely gentleman. Absolutely. Morning. Freak of nature. <laughs> My one of one of my inspirations for sure in this world, Mr. Ross Edgley. So we're going to be doing a podcast, and then we're also going to be going over the new Steve Cook slash Jim Shark line. I always find it very weird that I have to say my name in it, I'm, I, but it's weird to say my Jim Shark line. So I don't know how to say. Hopefully, um, it's this is going to be the first time feeling the material, seeing samples, and uh, I'm not going to go easy. If I don't like something, I'm going to let them know because. That's how we do. Nothing but perfection for you guys when it launches. It's gonna be exciting. All right guys, so my favorite part about coming to Gymshark is the fact that they have an amazing spread pretty much every day. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna be you swimming. Me. You I'm gonna be swimming It's not what it looks like. <laughs> This is you right here. <laughs> no, this, I'm just I'm Mate, wondering what to do. This is, the ha- this is the happiest place in the world. What are you going for, by the way? I'm thinking waffles. Waffles. I've got, I've got, I've got a, a big swim later. Yeah, me too. Waffle o'clock. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're gonna get a haircut today. They take. We roll into Gymshark. Breakfast, haircut, podcast, work on the clothing range. What more could you ask for? Yeah. We have, waffle as well. we have varying breakfast. Man, well, I, I had that sandwich in the in the car too. I think you get a waffle. <laughs> huh? So you're you're getting a waffle. No, I decided not to. And you got marmite as well. I'm trying marmite, but I'm gonna put it with avocado. Do people do that? <laughs> this is the diet of uh, one of the world's no. uh, best fitness models. This is the diet of somebody who floats around countries. I'm a real athlete. <laughs> that can eat whatever he wants because he is a fat burning machine. <laughs> You guys know how I feel about pineapple. I like eating pineapple. Digestive enzymes after a little meal. And it's like a perfect dessert. <laughs> the only thing pineapple doesn't belong on is pizza. You put pineapple on pizza, we're gonna fight. I bet you differ. What? I guarantee you, Ross. <laughs> he, he puts probably anything on pizza. <laughs> you didn't look at me then, like, what? what? <laughs> I was like, oh. People posted uh, before I came eating some Vegemite. Like, oh, Steve, try Marmite, it's better. Vegemite's still better. Sorry guys, it is. We- right, I'm gonna go get a fresh trim. Lord, I need me a break. But let me go by the weekend. How many vlogs have we had me cut yeah. hair? <laughs> like we do this probably <laughs> once a month. Wait, 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 wait. Gymshark special, and now we're gonna go do the podcast with Ross Edgley. I'm super excited for this. I'm a little bit nervous because the guy is just he's an absolute freak of nature. He's such a like such a real deal athlete, so it's gonna be a lot of fun. Let's go check it out. It's just gonna be me on my on my laptop and then this I rock in. It's a lot of, it's a lot of effing cameras in here. <laughs> what the shit is going on? This is what I said. This is the first one that we're doing from Gymshark HQ, but as promised, I said that I was gonna get Olympians, world record holders, uh, military personnel, and fitness legends. And when I said that on the last podcast, I knew I had to deliver, and I feel that I've done that. I feel quietly confident with this guest that I've got in my back pocket. Steve Cook, how are you doing? Oh, I feel like you just let everyone down. <laughs> like, who, who's on this? We got Arnold on? Steve who? No, 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 no. I'm gonna bring you on the road with me as my idol. <laughs> Wrap up, one other thing that I wanna uh, quiz you on is um, people don't quite understand that, you know, they, they often see, um, you know, the end result and they don't understand what went before it. Um, there's, there's some amazing stories where people talk about when you were traveling the world, you were, you were the, a lot of people say this, you know, one of the hardest working guys in the industry, that you, when you were vlogging, before it was even called vlogging, you know, you, you <laughs> yeah. mentioned there was one of your videos, you know, people would look at you and go, why are you talking to the camera? Yeah. You know, did you, well, I suppose my first question is, did you have the foresight to know that YouTube was going to be big, that vlogging was going to be a thing, that you could make a living from this? Did you have the foresight, or did you realize what you were doing when you were walking around talking to a camera? I would love to say it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I didn't. I, you know, at the time, I've been kind of, I think, 
right place at the right time, but also, you know, all got to thank my dad for, you know, setting that foundation, but also it's just, it's just about passion where, where there's passion for something. I, I think that there's going to be a path that you can create. If you're passionate about something, chances are someone else is equally passionate about that. There's 7.5 billion people on the planet. Like to think that we're all, you know, these perfectly unique snowflakes, it's a great thought, but I think, you know, every, you know, there's, there's somebody out there that has the same passion as you for something. Now there's not people that are swimming around the UK. So you, you take your passion and you apply it with just some crazy work <laughs> ethic. Um, I think that's what sets people apart, but there's passion out there. And so for, for me, like YouTube, I saw, you know, I, I had a girlfriend whose older brother did it and I saw he, he had some wild success. And I, you know, I saw an industry like the fitness industry where there was very limited people doing it. And, you know, I was, I was the first person at an expo walking around vlogging myself. I think there was me and Scott Herman and like six pack abs, Mike Chain. Wow. Those were like the fitness like YouTubers. I think you at the time. OG. That was like those two guys. I think were around before me, but I, I can How remember. Was that? What expo was it? By the way? Um, it would have been 2011, 2012. Um, that I would have been just starting. I actually had to start That's a set. Amazing. The YouTube I have now was my second YouTube because I started my YouTube and then went away from it, forgot the password, and then had to oh, start, no. had so, to start so a new one. So if you were to search your first video, would it be legitimately your first video? Or can we see like some of the old I think, I think my first video is me dancing in Santa Monica with some bums. Ready? I want to talk to you about this. All right, we are here in Santa Monica. Street performers. We got bums galore dancing. So we need to we need to drop some aesthetics on. <laughs> can we, can we get out? That is my and again, it has nothing to do with fitness. It was just me. Oh like, wow, look how old school that is. Yeah. <laughs> And so from that video there and to, to where you are today, is it, are you able to almost quantify for everybody listening just the work that you've put in? Often just like unpaid hours. When you were just, no one was paying you to do this. You know, it wasn't a job. Nothing existed. There wasn't even a thing as a, as a content creator. Right. You know, that physique competition, they didn't exist at this point. Is it true as well? I heard a story that you were, you were even waiting tables as well whilst competing, training almost like a professional athlete while uploading videos, while waiting tables, so you could actually supplement that much. Yeah, that actually yeah. So I had my biology, I was an integrated study biology, psychology, and I was looking at going into chiropractics, I was looking at a few different things, but I had just competed and just got a sponsorship with bodybuilding.com and Optimum Nutrition. And I, and I remember shooting with a photographer, probably the first time I was, first time I was ever in LA, first photo shoot, professional photo shoot I ever did, and he said, there's really no money in the fitness industry. Like you really can't like, unless you're a big time bodybuilder, there's nothing really here for people. Like, you know, so what do you want to do? And I just remember thinking, well, I'm passionate about this. Like social media, Facebook was around, Instagram wasn't quite there yet. YouTube was there and I was just like, you could, you could just feel, you know, this, you know, passion was, was for, you know, for educating and, and, and I just, Instead of listening to him, I was just like, you know what? I'm I'm going to work as a as a wait as a waiter. I'm gonna tell Optimum Nutrition, use me as much as possible. Send me around the world. They were paying me 500 bucks a month at the time, plus supplements. And I was just saying, though, like, hey, you're sending me to Singapore, Malaysia, Australia. Like, go. I would go to these expos and I would meet people. And I and I think that's probably where the most passion um, I, out of all of this last seven years in journey like meeting people around the world and everyone you know being a unique person having unique stories you know a lot of the times the stories are the same whether it's getting over relationships is why you started the gym but just connecting with people i think that's probably been my my looking back the greatest experience the experience of the things that i've got to go through is, is sharing moments with people at expos people crying breaking down talking about like the, the pain the struggle that they've gone through and just feeling that human connection because you know there that that is really what i think at the end of the day we all just kind of yearn for is that human connection and and for me that's been through 
through, uh, you know, fitness, through bodybuilding. And I think that, you know, the minute people lose sight of human connection, mm -hmm. and I think we, we definitely are in, in this day and age, there's less human connection. But again, getting back to like Alex Honnold and seeing that, that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. that you start looking at the psychology of it, you, it and it's human connection. You're like, how does, you know, how does he do that? Like, how does he, you know, so I, I think there's there's that, it's like that, that that feeling the need just to be a part of something. Mm -hmm. Because me wanting to believe in humanity, I'm like, yes. you know, I hope we start to follow people like yourself who are gonna so openly talk about that and, you know, whether it's now, whether you vlog about it, whether you write a book, I would genuinely, I would buy that, I would pre-order it now. <laughs> if you wrote a book all around behavioral science, muscle dysmorphia, I would, I would buy that. Mm -hmm. So that's, honestly, see, I just want to say thank you so much for being, you know, so honest and kind of just uh, teaching me a lot on this as well. Oh, thank, should, you. thank you. I should have taken notes. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, want, I want to do one and talk about you because I feel like we were going to talk a lot more about you and everything that you've done because we want to if we want to use a scientific study we need to look no further than yourself because you do some amazing things no no, no. i'm just gonna float it I float it. <laughs> that's what i do I float it. <laughs> um guys that was uh, the very first podcast from jim sharp hq uh, steve cook was every much a legend as i thought it would be steve hey, thank you so much Ray. thank you so so much appreciate it we're gonna show these english guys how how many how many english basketball players how many englishmen are in the nba I can't think of a single one. Are we doing like this? Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> He's so competitive. He's like, oh, here we go. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. I came all the way from the U.S. for that. Damn it. We're now rocking up to go over the Steve Cook season two line with Jim Shark. Just the whole design team. This is getting bigger and better. No wonder all the girl stuff's looking so good. Where are all the guy designers at? Hey, there you are. How are you guys? already gotten this you might not be able to go check right now douchebags.com oh my gosh that was a day I was being mr. nice guy pretty much so they laid out everything and to be honest if I give myself a score on the last Steve Cook Jim Shark line I give myself a six and a half um, walked in saw the line was probably a seven and a half right now we stayed there for five hours, scouring through everything. Made some bold decisions, some big time changes on things with fabrics and fits. Um, but I think that if anything, I stayed true to my style. And I think that sometimes that's all you can do. So I'm gonna be excited for people to see it. Um, hopefully, we knock okay on wood. Go, What's that? We okay to go? Oh, yeah, we're okay to go. Yeah, hopefully uh, January is when we're releasing it. Don't want to say for sure yet, but it will definitely be better than season one. The fits will be for everyone. First season, season one, I felt like it was more tailored just to my body types. There's a lot of body types out there that I didn't think the clothes worked on. This one, it will work for everyone. Let's go to London.